following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. The Garden of Eden. Today's lecture is related with the mysterious Garden of Eden <coughs> that uh, we have been talking about it in different uh, ways, in different lectures. And today, we are going to emphasize uh, this garden, the explanation of this garden, in order for us to understand uh, what initiation is. This uh, whole lecture, of course, will be related with the second uh, chapter of the book of Genesis. And uh, we will uh, explain different uh, aspects of the Garden of Eden, which this uh, second uh, chapter of Genesis explains in a very cryptic manner, Kabbalistic, alchemistic manner. To begin, let us uh, explain that in Kabbalah, when we talk about the tree of life, we always explain this, that uh, the tree of life shows us the picture of the whole universe that was made uh, by the Elohim, according to the Bible. Here, instead of God, we are going to name the word Elohim as it is described in the book of Genesis. <clears throat> that many translators have translated it as God in the mistaken way. The word Elohim is a plural word which means gods and goddesses. As well, there is a big difference that uh, the book of Genesis, the second chapter, shows us because sometimes it is named Elohim, and another times we read Jehovah Elohim, which in Kabbalah we said Jahava, because Jolhava or Jahava, as we know, always shows the two polarities, Jah, which is masculine, and Hava, which is Feminine. So when we say Jahava, 
we are naming immediately an androgynous entity related with the Elohim, which is a plural word which means gods and goddesses. This is very important to understand because uh, this is how it's described in the second chapter, which unfortunately, since the translators always translated these names in a singular way, still we have in our minds the picture of only one God, which is of course uh, erroneous interpretation. However, if we understand the multiplicity within the unity, if we understand the monistic polytheism, then the, if we apply the singular manner of the translation in that way, we understand that within that unity there is a multiplicity. And if we think in a multiple way, we understand that within, within that multiplicity there is a unity. And this is how, Gnostically, we had to understand and comprehend the book of Genesis, which is the book of the Gnostics. Remember that Genesis means generation. It's a book of alchemy, 100%, written in a very cryptic manner in order for the initiates to understand it. The Zohar, a book uh, written by the great masters of Kabbalah, explains all the mysteries of Genesis. But still, without walking on the path, it is not possible to understand their explanations. Because their explanations are Kabbalistic. As we find, for instance, the Pisti Sophia, written by the Apostles of Jesus Christ, which is another Kabbalistic book that explains everything in a Kabbalistic way. But if we don't know Kabbalah, then we fall into many mistakes. So therefore, since we are given the knowledge to humanity, we always demand from people to study the tree of life. Because that is the only way to understand the Kabbalistic books. So here, in the tree of life, we always name four worlds. These four worlds are the world of Atziluth, the world of Bria, the world of Yetzirah, and the world of Asia. Atziluth is a world of archetypes where we find all the elements of creation in a uh, in a chaos, we will say, as the Bible explains, empty and without form, meaning that still these elements are not in a shape or in a form, a concrete form. That is the meaning of empty and without form. So therefore, Atziluth is a world of the archetypes. We had to think in that way, which is a perfect world where we do not find any uh, spot, any evil, we will say, in the philosophical way. Everything is positive. The world of Asiluth is a world of God, which we always related to Keter, Chokmah, and Binah. 
But we have to understand, as we explained in other lectures, that in every single world, we find the ten sephiroth expressed, as we see in the tree of life. That's why in the world of Atziluth, which is represented by the three primary forces, Keter, Chokma, Bina, we find the rest of the Sephiroth. Uh, and we have ten spheres, which, uh, in which we find the name of God, or the name of the gods, in different ways. And this is very important to understand, because when in the Bible we name God, we are, of course, directly uh, pointing to the world of Atziluth. And uh, the name that we are naming here in the beginning that was Jehovah Elohim, and that the Bible translates as the Lord God is, of course, a uh, wrong translation. Even though we have to explain here that in Hebrew, Lord is uh, uh, Adonai. That is the name of the very bottom of the tree of life, which is Malkut. Adonai. So when we read in the Bible, the Lord, God, we are reading Adonai Elohim in Hebrew. Adonai, as I said, is the name of God in Malkut in the world of the archetypes. So every single name, of course, implies a function in every single sephira within the tree of life. So, when the Bible talks or when we read the Lord God, of course, immediately we think this is the action of the world of Malkut, the very bottom of the tree of life, <coughs> in the, the next world which is the world of creation. Because the second world in Kabbalah is Bria. Bria means creation. So first we have the world of archetypes. And then the world of creation, which is Bria. So if you read the book of Genesis, of course you uh, read that this is the way in which the universe and the earth were created. So when we said creation, we immediately have to place our mind in the second world, which is Bria. In other words, in the world of Bria, which is the world of creation, everything that is in the, without form and void within the archetype world, which is Atziluth, becomes with shape, becomes with form. Thanks to the activity of Jehovah Elohim, which is the name of God in the Sephira Bina. In the world of Aziluth. So you find here that in the world of Aziluth, Keter is, his name is Eheye Asher Eheye, which means in, in English, he is what he is. This is translated in the Bible as I am the one that I am. Uh, and when the God was talking to Moses. And of course, when God talks from himself, he says that, I am the one that I am. But if we read it, we have to read, he is what he is, because we are not that. So therefore, Keter is, I am 
ורים, אהיה, אהיה, אשר אהיה. חוכמה היא הסקנד ספר של העולם האצילות. The name of God there is Jehovah. We always translate that Jahava, because he is masculine, feminine. And immediately after Chorma is Bina, which the holy name is Jahava Elohim. So when you read in the Bible that Jahava Elohim, or Jahova Elohim, or as is translated, Jahova God created the universe, It is, of course, pointing at the Sefer Abina, which, in Christian terms, receives the name of the Holy Spirit. Because the first triangle of the Tree of Life is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That is the first triangle. The Holy Trinity, which is named in different religions, in different ways. Because remember that Keter, Chochma, Bina are Hebrew words. And means crowned wisdom and understanding. And uh, English, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or Christianity, of course, is very simple to understand. Three forces in one. In Hinduism, these three primary forces receive the name of Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. So in this case, Bina, the Holy Spirit, is Shiva in Hinduism. If we inquire in many religions, we will find the different names of these three primary forces. So therefore, it is very explicit there, telling us, the book of Genesis, that the one that makes the universe is the Holy Spirit. The one that creates is the Holy Spirit. <coughs> And many times we have stated in our lectures that the Holy Spirit in the human organism and in any organism is the sexual force, the sexual energy. Because God is not a person, it's an energy. So as the Holy Spirit is the sexual force that we have in our genitalia. So we all hear why we, the Gnostics, always put a lot of attention, a lot of emphasis in the sexual energy. Because without it, there is no creation. So then, when we read the Jehovah Elohim, or Jehovah Elohim, created the universe, then immediately you understand that the sexual force of the Holy Spirit is the one that works in Bria, which is the world of creation. But always we have to state that within the Holy Spirit is Chochmah and Keter, the Son and the Father. Because we understood or we understand that these are three primary forces, three in one. As we have uh, three brains, the intellectual brain, the emotional brain, and the motor sexual brain. We are three bra have three brains, but we are one person. In that way, we have to understand the three primary forces in one. But when we want to multiply ourselves, we don't use the head, we don't use the heart, we use the sex. In the same way, the three primary forces, if they want to create, they use Bina, the Holy Spirit, Shiva, in the world of creation. And this is why, how we understand how it is written in the book of Genesis, the second chapter. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. The heavens, of course, implies the superior dimensions and the earth, the inferior. When we name here the earth, something very important to understand, and heavens as well. In Hebrew, heavens is written 
Shamayim. And many times we explained that the word Shamayim is made with Shin, which is fire. That letter Shin is a letter whose symbol points the three primary forces as fire. This is how the letter Shin is made. If you imagine the end, the very end of the trident, that has had the shape of the letter Shin. And also the fork of Lucifer has also the trident or the fork with three. Because it's the three primary forces working through him. So there, the letter Shin implies fire. Because Shin in Kabbalah is fire. So when we said Shamayim, Mayim means water. So we are saying the fire within the water. And in the book of Genesis, we always explain, we always see that the fire works within the water. So the water, of course, is related with the sexual matter. That's why we state in alchemy that the sexual force is a uh, Liquid fire or a igneous water. Igneous means hot, fiery water. Because indeed, in the sexual energy and the sexual seed, <coughs> we have fire and water. So when in the book of Genesis it is written, Shamayim implies, of course, the waters from above within which these three primary forces are acting. And those waters are what in Sanskrit are called Akasha, which is a force, an energy, a blue substance in the space that contains that fire. So we said Akashic waters. We always imply the waters from above, which in different religions are named the mother. The mother that contains that heavens. In the book of Genesis, it is stated that Shamajim and Haaretz were finished. Heaven and the earth. But when we read Haaretz, the earth, we have to understand that it's talking directly to the matter itself. But there are many types of matter. The problem with us in the Western world is that we think that the only matter that exists is this three-dimensional world. But in the Bible, uh, it describes many types of matters. And when the Bible talks about the matter, or the book of Genesis specifically, it says earth, which is haaretz in Hebrew. Or it says adama, which means ground. So the ground, adama, haaretz, is of course the matter that takes shape in different levels. The matter itself exists in different levels, different dimensions. So when we read the heavens and the earth, we have to understand that he's talking about superior earth. Specifically in this chapter uh, number two of the book of Genesis. Because that haaretz, or that earth, is of course the mother itself. The heavens, Shamajim, explain the superior waters, the fire of the Trinity, and the earth, the mother, divided in order to create in the world of Bria. That's why it is explained there 
in the book of Genesis, these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created, in the day that Jahavah Elohim made the earth and the heavens. So you, write, uh, you, you hear there, Jahavah Elohim means the Holy Spirit. In which way? Of course, Jahavah Elohim is Bina. And many times in different lectures we explain that the Holy Spirit Bina divides itself into two in the world of Bria, in the world of creation. And he does it by these explanations. This is the way in which Jahabah Elohim created the heavens, superior forces, and the earth. Meaning, this is the division there. Heavens above, the earth below. Man above, woman below. This is the division of the two forces. And this earth that we uh, are talking here is explained precisely in the book of uh, Genesis when it says, And every plant of the field before it was in the earth. So he says, in the, in the fourth verse, first he says that the heaven and the earth were created. So when you imagine the earth, we imagine the earth with full of vegetation, life. But then the fifth verse says, in every plant of the field, before it was in the earth. It meaning it was not there. This earth that we are talking here, is that chaotic earth, which is symbolized by the Sephira Da'at, where everything is impossibility, or everything is possible, that's the way of saying. And every herb of the field before it grew, for Jehovah Elohim had not caused it to rain upon the earth. And there was not a man to till the ground, Adama. This ground, Adama, is Haaretz, the same thing. So this means that this beginning of creation is in the world of Da'at, which is the expression of the first Eden that we always explain that there are two types of Edens, or gardens of Edens. This garden of Eden is described here. Every plant of the field before it was in the earth. Every herb of the field before it grew. For Jehovah Elohim, the Holy Spirit, had not caused it to rain upon the earth. It caused not to rain upon the earth. That rain is a water for Shamayim. Because rain implies water. So when that water is not in the earth, means that the Holy Spirit is not yet impregnating the Mother Earth, or that chaotic matter within the chaos of that. But everything is there, prepared to be created. So this Earth, the Mother, is a feminine aspect, is what we call Hava, the Nukva. The feminine aspect of the Holy Spirit. That's why we always state that in that is a union of the masculine aspect of the Holy Spirit and the feminine aspect. And that is hidden in the word Jahava. Jah is the masculine, and Hava or Eve is the feminine. Jah sometimes is called Adam, Kadmon superior forces of the Trinity. In Adama, of course, it's also the feminine aspect, the ground. And after that, it says, but there went up a mist from the earth 
and watered the whole face of the ground. That mist of the earth is the sexual aspect, the feminine sexual energy of the mother that goes up to water the earth is on body. Because the Divine Mother is a feminine aspect of the Holy Spirit. It has the power of creation. But in order for what she has within her womb, which are all the seeds of the universe, she needs the rain from the Holy Spirit. That water, the rain, that comes from above, in order for those uh, seeds to grow up as a woman. The woman in her womb, she has all those aspects that needs in order to create a baby. But she needs that a man will reign on her, meaning to place the sperm in order for her womb to be plenty of life, because by herself she cannot do it. And a man by, her, by himself cannot do it too. So that explanation here in, the, in a chemical way that we are uh, explaining here. And that's why it is written after that, in Jehovah Elohim form Adam of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and Adam became a living soul. <coughs> Here, of course, is a long process of initiation in order to make this Adam. But is he in in a very simple way, that the Holy Spirit form Adam from the dust of the ground, meaning that ground, that Adama or Haaretz, because sometimes it says Haaretz or Adama, but it's the same thing, it's a feminine aspect. It means that the Holy Spirit makes Adam from the elements that the mother has. And it's very simple to understand when we put our minds in our level. The woman has all the elements in order to create a baby. But it needs the man to impregnate her in order to form from the dust, from those elements, from those atoms that she has there, we will say, in an arch archetype way, without form. Because if you go inside the womb of any woman, she has all of those elements that we need in order to create a human being, a physical body, but are empty and without form. And when we place the sperm within the ovum of that woman, and those elements start working and start taking shape. So then Jehovah Elohim needs to rain upon that ovum, upon that Adama, that earth that we are talking here. So then you see that the woman creates or flourished, we will say, blooms with pregnancy during nine months. So she's the one that is creating that, but she needs a man. So the how that's the how we understand Genesis that the earth is blooming. That's the aspect, the alchemic aspect. But it needs the positive and negative of Jehovah Elohim. In other words, Jehovah must be united in the sexual act. And then Chava, the earth, Adama, will build that. As below, so above. As above, so below. This means that if the Holy Spirit in our bodies creates in this way, unfortunately, as we understand always, through fornication, because we fornicate, but above, there is no fornication. So there we see <coughs> that God impregnates the chaotic matter, that sheen, and then the earth becomes plenty with life. This is how we have to understand the first chapter also, the book of Genesis, will explain there in more detail, but Kabbalistically, alchemistically. 
And only by walking on the path of initiation is how we understand this. Of course, it is written there that uh, Jehovah Elohim breatheth into the nostrils of Adam the breath of life. That is Neshama in Hebrew, which means soul. That breath of life, of course, in order to be put into the body of Adam implies a long process that we explain many times in many lectures and that is written in many books. But after that, it is written, <clears throat> And Jehovah Elohim planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Or there he put Adam, in other words, that he had formed. When it is written that Jehovah Elohim planted a garden eastward of Eden, we have to understand and comprehend that this garden, or the first garden that we are reading here, is not this physical earth, but the upper da'at, the superior matter, which is precisely where we find the union of Jah and Chava, Ava and Aima. And in it is where Jehovah Elohim, the Holy Spirit, places Adam. But who is this Adam? This Adam is represented always with the letter Vav. Because the letter of the holy name, Jov, Hey, Vav, Hey, that we translate as Jehovah, is explained in this way. Jov, Hey, is Jah, Hava, in the world of creation, as we explain here. Jod is Jah, and He is Hava, in the world of that. And in there is precisely when we find the first Eden, or Garden of Eden. When everything is in potentiality, and within it, uh, Jehovah Elohim places Adam. Which in this case, we will say, is the Ruach Elohim. That spirit of God that has to perform the work. That Ruach Elohim within uh, that is precisely that Hesed, or individual spirit, that we always said that we have as a gift of the gods. Because each one of us has a particular individual Hesed, mercy, spirit, which is the son of the Elohim. That's why it's called Ruach Elohim, means spirit of the gods and goddesses. Or oh, as the Bible states, the spirit of God. This spirit of God is the element that all of us has, and that has to perform the whole creation, or that has to perform the whole manifestation of all the elements which are in potentiality in that Garden of Eden, which is that in the superior worlds. So each one of us, all of us, has those elements in the superior worlds, in that in potentiality. That means that all the archetypes of the world of Atziluth are within us in the very depth, but not in activity, in potentiality. And that's the first garden of Eden that we have to understand, to comprehend. That is the first garden of Eden. So, of course, we need the Spirit of God to descend on us and to perform that initiation, that work, in order for us to put in activity all of those principles that are in the Garden of Eden of above. 
And that's what we understand and we explain always that there are two Edens. The Garden of Eden of above and the Garden of Eden of below. This is how we have to understand it and comprehend it. Otherwise, we enter into confusion. Problem is, of course, that in order to put it, those elements into activity, we need to uh, keep the Tzalem of God, which is that aspect of the Ruach Elohim that descends into the sexual glands. That Tzalem of God is what is written is the image of God. It is written in the book of Genesis that man was made into the image of God. But when we said God, I repeat, is always in the world of Asiluth. God is abstract. And that image is his Ruach Elohim that we explained. And that image descends from the superior worlds into the physical body, into the inferior worlds. And we carry it because it's Jehovah Elohim, the one that produced that uh, Ruach Elohim, or that image of God. And it's a sexual force. So we need to save to keep the sexual energy, to transform it, to manipulate it wisely in order to make that image of God within us. So when we read that the man was made into the image of God, we're not talking about the physical body. We're talking about that after aspect related with all the principles that are in that superior garden of Eden when we find Ava and Aima. Here we understand that commandment that says, Honor your father and your mother. That is the Jahava above. To honor them is by making that image which is within them concrete inside of us through the initiation to the work that we had to perform. But I repeat, <coughs> necessary is to study the tree of life because every single sephira has different lands. For instance, uh, you find written after that And out of the ground, which is Adama, which is the mother, made Jahava Elohim, the Holy Spirit, to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also, in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. These are the two trees that we always explain that are in the midst of the garden. And of course, the hat is knowledge, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And in the midst, of course, when we said the midst, we imagine the spinal column that is always represented by the letter Bab, which is just made a shape like a line straight vertical line with a, with a dot on the top. That dot on the top is a brain of the letter in the letter Vav. It's a dot and then a straight vertical line. That's the letter Vav. The dot on the top is a brain which points to Keter, Chochma and Bina. That always we state are in the head, the brain. And the rest, the straight line, is the spinal column. So then, 
the letter Vav is directly uh, connected to God. That's why it means connection. That's why in the book of uh, Genesis, every time that any verse starts, starts with and God this, and God that, and, because that and in Hebrew is the, a single verb. Like in Spanish, when we said E, it's just a single Y. So in Hebrew, the single vav means end. And it's pronounced the. So the whole thing is telling us that the whole creation is made through the three primary forces that we are explaining here are the three forces that create. But they do it through the spinal column which starts precisely in that, because if you place that below the first triangle, it's precisely there in the throat, directly with the very beginning, the top of the spinal column. Because the end of the spinal column is yesod. And that's why we always state now, the letter above connects the brain with sex. But we have to understand that uh, uh, that first garden of Eden is that, and the second garden of Eden is Yesod. And how do we understand this? Well, it is written there in a very simple way. In the second chapter of the book of Genesis. It is stated, and a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. Which is this uh, river? Well, if you imagine a river, you imagine a straight line. Even if it's curved, like the spinal column, because the spinal column is, is straight, but it's curved, like a river. So when we say that a river came out from Eden, of course we have to understand that it's that. Coming from the brain, in other words. Down. But remember that the one that works from the brain down is Jehovah Elohim, Bina, the Holy Spirit. This is how the three primary forces descend in your brain into your spinal column from above. So that river is your spinal column. And from there is where the three primary forces, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend in you, descend in Adam. And this is how we understand. And to water the garden. Now, this garden that we are naming here in the verse 10 is another garden. It's not the first garden. The other garden is below, which is in Yesod, but also implies Malkut. Because Malkut is the outcome of Yesod. So this Malkut, of course, that we are naming here, is this garden in potentiality as well? Please understand that. Because when Malkut is formed, like our physical body is Malkut, it's already with shape. But in Yesod, which is a sexual energy, in our own particular Yesod, we find in potentiality all the elements that we need in order to create a physical body. But also we find all the impotentiality, all the elements that we need in order to create the internal bodies, the man into the image of God. And that's precisely the other garden. So a river departs from the upper Eden, which is that, and goes into the sex in order to water that garden, 
which is our own particular elements which have in potentiality. This is how the elements descend from above into us below. In order to do what we have to do. But the one that is going to do it is that Ruach Elohim, which is the Spirit of God. We have to allow him to do it. And this is precisely the mystery of initiation. Because remember this. <coughs> it is stated there that the river is divided in four branches. It means that from that, the river that is the spinal column, which is Vav, which is represented by Tifereth, and Yesod, is divided in four branches. What other four elements do we find there in the tree of life? Then we find Chesed, Geburah, Netzah, and Hod. That's all the other four uh, Sephiroth. This is how it's hidden everything there in a very cryptic manner in order for only those that uh, know Kabbalah and alchemy to understand. That's why it says that the first is the land of Avila, which is Geburah, where there is gold. And the other is the land of Ethiopia. You see? Land, which is Haretz. In other words, we will say, Geburah is the earth of Avila. Hesed is the earth of uh, uh, Ethiopia. And then we find the other river or the other names, which is Herikel. That is that uh, branch that goes into Assyria, which is another land. And the fourth is Euphrates, that goes into the lower land of Hod. So we find here the symbol of the four branches, which always, as we say, is related with the four elements. Many times we say that the river that descends from the heart into Yesod, which is the spinal column, is related with the Akashic waters with the superior waters of Shamayim that descend from above into our superior body, which is Yesod. Many times we said that Yesod represents the vital body of the human being. The physical body is Malkut. In other words, in Yesod is where we have that Malkut in potentiality. Or that Eden in potentiality. Because when we talk about the Garden of Eden, we imagine a place with a lot of vegetation, flowers, a beautiful paradise. And that's precisely the Garden of Eden. And that's below, in Yesod, in us, in other words. In the vital body is where we have that, and that vitality, that force of the vital body expresses itself through the sexual energy through the sexual organs. So that Garden of Eden that we read here symbolically is in potentiality in Yesod, in our sexual glands. In Malkut is a physical body that we have that is concrete. But this Malkut really is the outcome of fornication. But thank goodness because of mercy, the Elohim, Jehovah Elohim, placed those elements in our Malkut, but in Yesod, in the sexual organs, in potentiality. This is what we have to understand and comprehend. When we talk about the Garden of Eden, we are not now uh, referring to that Garden of Eden that existed in the past. It's another lecture, it's another topic. Here we are talking directly in the psychological, physiological manner, the archetypes. Because the Garden of Eden, we carry it 
in the sexual glands in potentiality. And from our depends to put it in activity. And that's precisely the way in which in the book of Genesis is described in the second chapter. Because for that, in order to do that, we have to make the seventh day holy. Shabbat, as we say it in Hebrew, or the Sabbath. That means Shabbat, the Sabbath, is the day of Jehovah Elohim. It is stated that Jehovah Elohim created all of six days. In the sixth day, he made the man, Adam. But in the seventh, he finished his work. It doesn't say that he didn't work in the seventh day. In the seventh day, he finished his work. In the seventh day, he works. He finished there. That's why it is written that uh, the man has to work six days, but the seventh is the day for Jehovah. That means that if you discover the meaning of the seventh day, you work or allowed your Jehovah Elohim to work in you and to make all of this wonderful creation within you. Because he's the one that does it. So when you discover the seventh day, which is about the mystery of that, and then you start working with alchemy. Because this is the day for Jehovah. I mean that you, you should work with it. But it implies, of course, a lot of mysteries. And that is explained there in the book of Genesis in the simple way. I mean, simple, cryptic manner when you know the mysteries. <coughs> and that's why it is uh, explained there that uh, when the river was divided in four branches, was going in order to water the Garden of Eden. That means that those uh, four branches are related with the same river. We will say those four branches of the river are related with the same water. But they go to different lands. Those lands, of course, are superior lands, superior dimensions. Superior bodies that we had to create and that we explain in many ways, different times. Because if we explain that those four uh, branches are related with the four elements, we name those four elements, earth, water, fire, and air, chemically, which are related with the name of Yod, He, Vav, He, Jehovah. Of course, those four uh, forces or branches descend in Yesod, which is the garden, in potentiality. And many times we say that we have uh, the Tatwas, in the vital body. The Akasha Tatwa, which relates to the spinal column, to that superior Shamayim waters that come from above. And then the inferior tadwas, tadwa pritvi, the earth, tadwa apas, the water, tadwa vayu, the air, tadwa tejas, the fire. Those are the four branches that comes from akasha and that go into the vital body, which is our own particular yesod, superior part of the physical body. And then when they crystallize in the physical body, they crystallize in the seed. That's why it is written in the book of Genesis, very clear. That Jehovah Elohim said to Abraham, behold here, this name, Abraham. They were created in Hebrew, it says, Be Habaram or Habarim, 
or Habaram, something like that. Habaram, Be Habaram. But this is a crop, it's a crop, a crop tick. That when you explain is Be Abraham, the heavens and the earth were created. Because this Abraham represents the Ruach Elohim that comes from above. So when we name in the Bible Abraham, of course, this prophet existed. But he represents our own particular Ruach Elohim. Through Abraham, Jehovah Elohim made the heavens and the earth. This is how you have to understand. Behi Varam is an acroptic that we had to uh, explain in order for us to understand creation. So Jehovah Elohim said to Abraham, Unto thy seed I will give this land. When people read this, they think, oh yeah, the land there in the Middle East will be given to the descendants of Abraham, physically speaking. No, that is not the meaning. That is taking the things literally. The real meaning is, and to thy seed, because the seed is precisely the sexual element, within we find those elements in potentiality. So when you transmute them, when you enter into the initiation, unto thy seed of Abraham, which is the Ruach Elohim that makes the waters in activity in the beginning, will give this land. What land? The land of Avila, the land of Ethiopia, the land of Assyria. But all those lands are exactly related with the superior dimensions. I repeat, the problem with us is that in the beginning we think. Now, when we talk about the land, we're talking about physical land. No. What do we want physical land here? The land that we are interested in is the land of Eden, the land of Avila, the land of Ethiopia, which are those uh, rivers that says the first river or the first branch goes into the land, the Haaretz, the earth of Avila. It's not the country, or it's not Ethiopia, the country. It relates to the superior lands, to the superior sephirah that we have to elaborate if we know the transmutation. Otherwise, it will be written, all of these lands I will give unto your, unto your seed. Then we understand, oh yeah, to your descendants, I will give you all of these lands that are here. No. To thy seed means... To the sexual potency, because Jehovah Elohim abides within the sexual force. So, into thy seed I will give. If you transmute your seed, I will give this land. What land? Hod, Netzah, Tiferet, Geburah, Chesed. Because those are the lands that we need in order to create the internal Adam. Because remember that those four branches, water the garden below. So that needs to water the garden below, but is divided in four branches because below Tifereth, which is a human soul, is Netzah and Hod, and above it is Geburah and Hesed. Those are the four branches that we need to develop within the psyche because Tifereth is the psyche. Is the anima, the human soul, that works through Yesod. To the human soul, many times we said, is how the Spirit of God descends. Through the human soul is how Abraham comes from above, the Father from above, below in a sexual potency. This is how we understand that the land will be given unto us through our seed, semen, in other words, if we transmute it. It has nothing to do with the physical plane here, because there are many groups there that are fighting in order to get the land of Israel in the Middle East. Or those lands there, because the Bible explains that that belongs to Abraham, but it's not the meaning. It's something internal, psychological. 
alchemical. So therefore, the four branches descend into the vital body, into Yesod. Now you understand why the initiate has to pass very consecutively in different times the ordeals of the four elements. Because in order to enter into initiation, you need to manipulate to handle the sexual energy, the seed. And that seed that you transmute in different octaves is related with the four branches, is related with the river that comes from above. Remember that Jehovah Elohim is the one that makes the creation, Bria, as above and below. So this Jehovah Elohim, the Holy Spirit, of course, works at the sexual potency in our sexual glands. That sexual potency is that aspect of the Holy Spirit that is named Lucifer. Lux and fire. Lucifer. Or we said Luciferus. Luciferus. Light and fire. Lucifer is a Latin word which means light and fire. Ferus sometimes is translated as carrier. Luciferus. Luciferus. Carrier of the light. And that carrier of the light is a sexual fire. So Lucifer is a sexual potency that gives erection to the sexual man and humility to the woman in order to perform the sexual act. So... When we enter into the path, we enter through Lucifer. Now you understand why Lucifer was offering the fruit to Chava, which represents the physical uh, body, that represents the mother, that represents Chava, the sexual organs. So he gives that. And through him, if we avoid the spasm, the abominable orgasm of the beasts, then we enter into the initiation. That's why it is written that Lucifer is the door or the guardian of the door of Eden. If we fornicate, he kicks us out. But he always offers us the fruit, which means the way to perform the sexual act. In order to enjoy the tree of knowledge. Problem is that with the erection, with the temptation of Lucifer, humanity doesn't control the spasm, the orgasm, and then is kicked out. He cannot build because all the elements that we need in order to build the human into the image of God, to elaborate all that garden of Eden within us, is in potentiality in the human seed. And to thy seed I will give these lands. If we transmute it. But if we spill it, if we reach the orgasm like the beasts, we don't get any land. We lose the lands. Those lands are, of course, acquired with transmutation. But in order to get them, we have to be tested many times. Because the four branches that goes into your sod, which is the sexual energy, are related with the four elements. As we already explained. That's why it is written that whoever is entering into initiation is tested by Jehovah Elohim. Because Jehovah Elohim wants to give us his lands, superior sephiroth, through our seed. If we transmute it. If we liberate the image of God. But we have to be tested 
all the time because the four rivers that go into your sod are related with the first initiation. The four rivers that go into your sod are related with the second initiation because every single initiation starts in your sod. Nobody can start any initiation without transmuting the sexual energy of Yesod, without transmuting the seed. So therefore, comprehend and understand that no matter what initiation we are, no matter what level we are, the path is always sexual. We walk on the path when we transmute the sexual energy of Yesod. And in Yesod is Lucifer, which is always the tempter. And in Yesod are joined all the four branches or energies that come from above that we need to transmute in order to inherit the lands above in heavens that we need to create those earth harets or adamas, which is the power of initiation or the path of initiation. <coughs> now you understand why the ordeal of earth the ordeal of water, the ordeal of fire, the ordeal of air are always placed on the path in different octaves. Because those four branches allow us to create the astral body, the mental body, the causal body. Those four branches allow us to rise the serpents of fire, the serpents of light. Because all of those serpents rise from Yesad. And Yesad is a conjunction of the river that come from above, from the upper Eden, into the lower Eden. So this is how we understand and comprehend that in the beginning, when we enter into this path, we are naked. In other words... We don't have anything. But we had to build our vestures, the vestures of the soul, the vestures of Tiferet, by knowing how to transmute the seed. And remember that that seed is the same Christ that descends from above in order to give us the powers from below and above. Because there are other lands, of course, that exist below this world, which is Klippoth. Those lands we are not interested in. Because we are in them. Klippoth, hell, inferno. Those lands are very populated by fornicators. Why do we want to inherit the lands of Klippoth? We want to inherit the lands of heaven. The heavens and the earth from above. But unfortunately, we had too many elements from Klippoth that are identified with the lands below, which are nine inner layers, the infernal worlds. Angels live in the superior lands above, superior Sephiroth. Demons dwell in Klippoth, in the inferior lands, which of course are not the outcome of transmutation, but the mechanicity of fornication that have an end, a beginning and an end. Do you have questions? Does that correspond to your thought as what? As it corresponds to the mandala for the Shwaristana chakra. Well, that corresponds indeed to all the Sephiroth. Because in that is where heavens are created and earth below. Remember that in the book of Genesis it starts, this is the, the way in which Jehovah Elohim created the heavens and the earth. And after that says, this is how Jehovah Elohim created the earth and the heavens. So first, 
is named the heavens and the earth. That is, of course, the creation from above to below. And after that, he says, the earth and heavens. That implies the initiation from the very bottom to the top. Because weather is the creation from above to below, the heavens and the earth. Remember that end is vav, always. Right? So heavens and the earth from above implies, of course, all the sephiroth of Shamajim related with the earth below, which are any sephiroth. Anyone. Because all of them comes from that. Remember that all the sephiroth are in, in potentiality within the matter, within the mother. And the Holy Spirit, Jehovah Elohim, puts them in activity from above to below, heaven and earth, and is above. But also, Jehovah Elohim, the Holy Spirit, puts them in activity from below to above, which means from the earth above heaven. This is how it explains. It says, uh, in the verse number 4 of the chapter 2 of Genesis, these are the generations, see, generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. That's the first, from above to below. In the day that Jehovah Elohim made the earth, and the heavens. So this is another creation. This is the creation that we have to make from below, from the earth, up to heaven. And of course, that chakra that uh, is a question about is related, of course, with that. But not only that. All the chakras are related with that in Yesod. Yes? When uh, the question is, is the uh, liquids that are uh, shared in the sexual act, the elements when mixed through shared climax, or climax means the orgasm? Of course, the climax uh, when they are mixed in the sexual act, right? In the, which means the orgasm, the liquids of male and female. In them are the elements that we are talking here. Those elements in potentiality. In the climax, when they reach the orgasm of the beasts, all those elements are spilled out. I mean, I are lost. That's why nobody can create anything within, spiritually speaking, if they spill the elements. They can create just outside, which is a physical body, like the beasts. They create in that way. But there is nothing uh, inherited, spiritually speaking, with any type of creation. That's why if we avoid the climax, if we avoid the spasm of the orgasm, then the elements are not expelled. And they are uh, transmuted, absorbed by our own physical, psychological nature, spiritual too, and the lands of Avila, Ethiopia, and all of those superior lands are, of course, inherited by this way of transmutation, because unto thy seed I will give all this land. That's the promise to Abraham. But Abraham, I repeat, is the Ruach Elohim, the Holy Spirit, the image of God that we have to build within People, of course, lose all those uh, divine principles in every orgasm. Uh, the student also asks where uh, there is written information concerning the state's use of the elixir in ritual medicine. Okay, the, the, the question is where it is written the way in which we can use those elements in the ritual of sexual magic. Well, uh, by the book, The Perfect Matrimony, The Mystery of the Golden Blossom, those are, we will say, the main books where the master, Samael Onveor, explains the procedure. 
in order to take advantage of those elements. And uh, in the website, you find many lectures where we talk about it, and most of the books. So the master Samael Onveor explains that in a very open way, because the way that we are spending here is just unveiling the cryptic manner of the book of Genesis. Another question? If you associate lo Lot with a B, as in uh, 666, is this then positive? I never associated the word looks with the B 666. I said I associated with Lucifer. And Lucifer is not the beast, 666. Satan is, which is the shadow of Lucifer. But Lucifer itself means looks and fire, or carrier of light. The Catholic Church took the name Lucifer and associated it with evil. But Lucifer is only the sexual potency that becomes the big 666 when you ejaculate, when you reach the orgasm. And then you transform Lucifer into Satan, and that's different. So we don't have to mix here, things here. One thing is Lucifer as a savior, because Lucifer really is Christus Lucifer. Christophorus, the one that carries the child on his shoulders. Read about the mystery of the giant Ophelus. Ophelus, I remember his name. That carries the child of God in his shoulders. Christ, or Christ. That's why the giant Christophorus, or Christophorus, is a giant that carries a, a God in his shoulders. That is Lucifer, in other words. The sexual potency. Question? Well, when, uh, the question is about mercury that is poisoning to us. But you're okay, talking... Mercury and ambrosia, the same fluid. Uh, mercury is related to ambrosia, yeah. It is related with that element. But when we study mercury, we have to understand that it is related with different levels of uh, transformation of the sexual matter. It, there, there exists the brute mercury, which is the sexual energy as we have it in the sexual glands, that's the brute mercury. There exists the dry mercury. That dry mercury is the ego, which is the crystallization of fornication, the B666. Then we have the soul of the mercury, which is the uh, outcome of the transmutation of the brute mercury, when we know the sexual transmutation. And then we have the mercury fecundated by the fire, which is the internal lens that we have to create. It's another type of mercury. And we have another poison, poisonous mercury, which is lust. So when we talk about mercury, you have to talk in a very broad way because uh, it implies different levels. And mythology explains that. But if you don't know these uh, uh, divisions that we explain here, you fall into confusion. The ambrosia, of course, is related with the soul of the mercury. Another question? Da'at is the question is, is the sephira da'at better thought of as a path? Better thought of as a path than a sphere. Rather than a sphere. Well, uh, in reality, uh, yeah, that really is the path in which we know, because this that means knowledge. So we will say that 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 really is related with uh, different aspects of the tree of life. Not only in Atziluth, but in Bria, in Yatsirah, in Asia, even in Klipoth. And people abuse of that, the tree of knowledge, in this way through evil. They enter into Klipoth. So yes, that, that mysterious sphere is related with many things. The whole book of Genesis is related with that. Related with that or with that. 
All right, so do you have another question? Thank you very much. And uh, keep studying the tree of life because this is the never ending study. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Thank you.